We've got Box the Outside founder and career leadership and empowerment coach Melissa Anderson in to discuss the power of positive perspective. And we'll cheers with our nightcap, the Pinot Egregio, tonight on It's Complicated. You're listening to It's Complicated with your hosts, Jennifer Golden and Lauren Leonelli, coming to you live from the AfterBuzz TV studios in Los Angeles, California. Hello, Master Daters. <laughs> Welcome back for another episode of It's Complicated. The struggle is real when you're dating a Masada. Oh my God, I'm Jen. And I'm not John. I'm still not. Guys. Still not. Do you know who she is, guys? It doesn't matter. If you don't, then you will. If you don't know, now you know. And what you're also going to know <laughs> is today we have a super special, powerful episode. Oh, yeah. We're going to discuss the power of perspective, positive perspective, that is, and how it can change your relationships in your life with career, leadership, and empowerment coach and founder of Box the Outside, Melissa Anderson. Oh, yeah. Guys, Melissa spent 18 years, 18 Years. I mean, that is she dedication. looks like she's eight, like maybe 25. So I'm like, so were you four when you, I did that math? I think is seven. Wrong. Okay, don't ask me it's fine. that stuff. I was just really happy I actually knew the answer because. You know, Are you right? Yeah. Oh, you're right. You're Oops. right. See, I, um, I did it. <laughs> so she spent basically since she was seven, she worked in the workforce <laughs> as a business executive in the fashion industry, specializing <laughs> in executive leadership, business development, and sales strategy, working for notable global brands, managing large teams, and multi-million dollar portfolios. She's contributed to brands from New York to L.A., at companies such as BCBG, who we wear and love, mm -hmm. True Religion, Tom Shoes, Onzi Flow, and WGSN Trend Forecast. Yes, and after many years of working in this in industry, Melissa found herself at a crossroads, and she was realizing her potential was in supporting, mentoring, and coaching people and her teams, because she was in charge of teams, because she's that big of a deal. And she felt like she was really guiding them on their personal and professional journey. So in 2017, she took a huge leap of faith and decided to leave her corporate job and launch into becoming a certified professional coach. She spe specializes in helping women in their career, leadership, and empowerment journeys. And after her own diverse experience in the business life, she has decided to take her gifts and her passions as a leader and an advisor to help others accomplish their dreams in relationships, life, career, and more. Like, it really is applicable to probably anything, but those are the main trifectas uh-huh if you need help just call melissa basically yeah not ghostbusters melissa no well yeah but she might be able to get rid of some evil demons i don't too. know anytime i have an issue she has an answer so <laughs> whatever she'll it sage is. you and it's all good. basically but we'll yeah. get more into that whole staging yeah. thing later um and melissa continues to consult entrepreneurs and small business owners advising them in various ways to grow and develop their brands helping to create a roadmap for success in defining scaling and maximizing their brand potential she works with many female forward business owners like we mentioned and women in industry to help them define and create action plans toward their personal and professional dreams and goals we'll talk to her more about that as we go on why women specifically for example yes and she contributes corporate coaching to executives teams and organizations as well and obviously if you're a man and you're listening this is you know for everybody but it's just specifically focused on women and like we said we'll get to that and also before we get to that we're getting to this because we need to cheers with our nightcap it's oh, yeah. pinot agrigio get it's it very good because sometimes the wine of the universe agrees with your positive energy and we're saying that we're going to all figure out how to agree with the universe today. Mm -hmm. Or and have the universe agree with us. Or whatever. We'll figure it, it all out. It has to match. It, yeah, we're going to let match. it all unfold yes. like our lives. Yes. So, guys, I happen to be fortunate enough to call Melissa my cousin. Mm -hmm. She married my cousin. So, like, I claim her as my cousin, not like an in-law or whatever. Basically, even like a sister. Yeah. So, I'm lucky and stuff. And you'll, like, fall in love with her, too. But you cannot have her. So, Lauren can have her. But... I'll take her. You can have her as a coach, but not as your family. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so like I said, I ask her for all solutions to all problems. I asked her to sage me the other day, and she said some things and asked me to think of some things and did the whole Palo Santo all over me. And, you know, it was also Yom Kippur, so it was like a spiritual day. Yeah. 
So then things started to happen really oddly, like, like right after. Instantly. Uh, we walked back inside and it was like the phone just blew up. And I turned out the commercial I was shooting like that week was like only going to be nec- the next day, not two days from then. And I was like not expecting that, but it was great because I did it and got it over with. But it was awesome. Um, and then the guy that we all know that I recently had a breakup with, um, he reached out so oddly it was like the most selfish reaching out ever like feigning in- interest in my life and the things that were going on like the car accident and I was in that day it was like pretending he yeah. cared which is the most selfish thing you can do if you don't actually it was care. a temperature gauge to test to make sure that things were okay so he could feel better about what he did yes and like oh lame. I'm so glad you don't hate me well, first of all I never said I don't hate you <laughs> and you never said you did either let's not be no. that extreme it's just like no. now you can see things a little clearer and you have right. made decisions because of that but what did that teach you, Jen? Uh, not this. to respond. No, but like it taught you what we like to call boundaries. Oh my God. My yeah. favorite thing in the world is boundaries. Oddly, again, the full moon, if you guys are into astrology, which you know we are if you watch and listen to our show, um, is in Aries right now. And that is like the moon of boundaries. And I was oh, reading I all of this that. stuff. Okay. And it was like, you are going to set boundaries with everyone and create a positive atmosphere for your life. And you're going to tell people no. So anyway, I basically told him, don't write me again unless you have something worthwhile to say. And he didn't. And he actually didn't even write back. Not even like understood, sorry, or really do hope you're well. Sorry, I actually added stress to your life or and gave you no explanation. Actually never even like saw you face to face to break up. It's fine. We're all moving on. Um, that's but the like point when is, the guy that I dated, we're setting boundaries. That's like the when the guy that I dated before the guy I'm dating now told me to have a nice life. When I gave him boundaries, right. I was like, I don't really think it's great that you're texting me right now because I think we need a little time and space and also respect the relationship that you're in with the girl that has the same name as me that you were dating <laughs> while you were with happened. me. Maybe no, oh but I didn't God. say that. I was just like, maybe don't. And he said, have a nice life. Which I love because we can talk about we it for the rest of our it. lives. Because it's like, are we are having a, knife li- a nice life. Yeah. Oh, trust me, my life is much better without you. Oh, praise the Good Lord. Good luck to your fiance. Hey, He's engaged. I know. You told me that's crazy. Time. I really hope that that's not what I think it is, but let's just go on. Um, Anyways, I have been dealing, it's sort of like boundaries, but like I've been dealing with like learning how to do things with more people. And this is kind of going to sound like an easy thing, but it's also really not. And also it's going to be a little contradictory to what I liken myself to, which is a team player. Like I thrive in group settings and with teams and I really like doing that. But I found that through my like many years being single that I also cultivated a really like close and deep relationship with my independent Lauren. Not that you can't be independent and a team player, but like with my solo self, I guess you should say. And so now that I'm in a relationship and I live with my boyfriend and his daughter, I'm trying to figure out how to make the balance happen between like the Lauren that used to sit on the couch for two hours and watch the housewives and could like decorate the house at her own disposal. Like, I could move this thing or that thing, and, like, there wouldn't be any questions asked. No, you only had to answer to you. And so, and I like it. I'm just saying I need to figure out those the balance. boundaries. And also, and I want to talk to Melissa about this, too. I've been talking to a feng shui expert, and it's <laughs> really expensive, but, like, I really want to do it. And so should I do it, guys? I don't know. Okay, that's well, my question. Well, if we're voting, I vote yes. Okay, well, it's not cheap. No, but here's the thing. We're talking about energy and positive perspective. I know. Positive perspective, Mel- I want so. Melissa's perspective on this as well because right. I feel like that will help me well, decide. And I have one more thing to add to this because we have to get her perspective on this one, and it's super spooky and crazy town. But a guy that I like oh. had um, connected with two years ago, like literally ran into him at Soho House one night with a bunch of friends. He happened to be friends with a mutual friend. We happened to chat and it was like no one else was there around us. Mm-hmm. We just like Instant zeroed in connect. on each other. Yeah. And but then I come to find out he was married with two kids and lives in Chicago. So that was the end of that. And we literally did not communicate after that at yeah. all other than he followed like our show on social media, me on social media, but we did not actually communicate. Then Two years later, fast forward, only a couple weeks ago, we match on Bumble. And I'm like, this can't be his account because he's an actor and like, you know, a working mm-hmm. one and maybe people like stole his photos or something. So we actually matched and it was him and then we hung out and it was like magical. Like we had known each other forever and picked up right where we left off, which by the way, we don't know each other at all. So the f- reason that like yeah. it's so weird is because we feel like we know each other super well, but like we don't and we reconnected and like the feelings were still there from that one time we met for two hours they lingered it's super crazy town 
we both are like, what is this? This is super weird and cool. But he also like lives in Chicago. And well, he comes we'll here often, but I don't know. Well, we'll, we'll talk to Melissa about what that what she thinks that like energy means or that connection well, or how to cultivate it or it's a little hallmarky meets Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> okay, well, this could be Partly good. Partly because he looks a little bit like Christian Grey yeah. without that weird sex mm-hmm. dungeon. Well, who knows? Who knows? Um, okay, guys. <laughs> well, we're going to talk about a lot of things on we're this gonna show. We're going to talk about a lot of in things. Addition to in, Fifty Shades of Grey. in addition to actually getting Melissa here because she yeah. is here tonight to share education around what coaching is and how it's applicable to create power in all that you do in life, including your relationships. Welcome to the show, Melissa. Yay! Hi, thanks, thanks for, for coming. Hi, ladies. Thank you so much for having me. Don't oh forget about gosh. your wine. However, you will have to move your mic when drinking. So, yeah, no, if you, you would like to take your sip of Pinot Egregio. Yeah, we app a lot, so you'll have opportunities. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, we do. Uh, you guys, we're going to talk about the power of positive perspective. Mm-hmm. And we know that you coach people and it's there's so many so many different specificities that go into that but that's like kind of a good umbrella to start with like that's you we talk in her coaching sessions melissa talks about like the levels of energy right like one to seven and like where you we're live. still trying to figure ours out <laughs> i think that i'm the caregiver person which is not what whatever. is that Five, four, 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 four. It's not great. Very service oriented. Yeah, but it's like still not that good. Anyway, <laughs> so, but, and and this can help you with, what do you think the main, like, things that people come to you with are the, the main areas of life that people come to you with questions and they need help and guidance? Yeah, um, well, thank you so much for teeing me up on that. You know, we, as you ladies know, I hosted a workshop last week and we talked a lot about not only the various levels of energy that we bring to all that we do, but... W- what I really, really coach around is energetic leadership coaching and empowerment coaching. So it's about energy breeds like energy is at the most fundamental level, the more positive energy you put in the universe, the more you'll get in return. And that applies to also the goals and dreams you're going after. Um, And then also the reciprocal is the more negative energy you're putting out, the more lower levels of energy, the more negative you're going to get in return. It's kind of that basic yeah like whatever the energy is whatever you're thinking about is happening so even if you're like i don't want this thing to happen well that thing might you're putting energy into the thought of it not happening and it's there and then well let's talk relationships for a second because if i'm putting out really good energy which i think i am and then i'm attracting somebody who has like a low level energy or some issues let's just say because i yeah what does that mean yeah, does that mean she's I, wrong or that i am the one with low level energy i can't be mirroring that shit. well you know it's a good question in coaching we do say that what we see in other people whether it's positives or maybe sometimes negatives are mirrors of ourselves maybe things we don't like we very much don't like or things that we very much do like they're all uh learning lessons they're all opportunities for growth so if you're attracting people that not necessarily you don't like where's the opportunity there? What could you learn from those people? So for example, what would Jennifer learn from her last relationship from someone that maybe wasn't giving her the things she needed and wanted? Don't date that person. No. Oh, Um, well, to get out sooner and to trust my intuition. And what else did I learn? Well, I would think like (laughs) even more specific, like the things that Melissa mentioned, like that he was giving you not giving you things that you need like maybe now you know what those things that right. you need are like and time. that you, yeah oh god it all goes back to the five languages of love i need it time. Does, that what do you think about that what do you think about the five languages of love you know i actually love that book okay um i my husband and i read that book together um like out loud on the couch yes, like you uh, read brendan you <laughs> read this so slowly though sorry Amigio. i love you cousin um but no you know i do i like the premise you know even being a coach even though if you go out and you get a certain certification you learn certain philosophies based on other people's you know own personal exposure to lessons and teachings and etc so long and short is like i bring five languages of love into my coaching all the time Mm -hmm. it's really important love is the number one biggest energy factor in the universe it is literally the most dominated because it's so emotional it's like love and money the two most energetic things. Or like some people say love and power. Love and power, yeah, but uh-huh. power is, money is power. Yeah, right, exactly, times, yeah. Right, so it's all about your philosophy around it. And I think, you know, 
what is your approach? What is your approach to love? What is your what is your energetic approach to love? What is your energetic approach to money? What is your energetic approach to life? And and the languages of love are interesting because you might speak a different language than you want to be spoken to. And so this is going back to what we were talking about now, like being a mirror. And you might be attracted to men that you see some of the qualities that you like about yourself in or that you want you yourself to be more like or that this last guy that you dated may have some things about him that you may have done or do that you don't like about yourself and you're trying to learn but regardless you're attracted to fil- familiarity don't you think even well, like often you can be but i mean also yeah. i think that also varies on the positive or negative side you could also be very repelled to familiarity um but going oh, back true. to what i saw in him originally i did actually see so much good that i was like oh my god this person is a perfect match for me of for a variety of reasons but i was thinking about this today Positive perspective sometimes I think can be generated like almost too frivolously. What does like, that mean? So if let's say you start dating somebody and you really want to find love, you might start attributing things to them in a positive way and checking off boxes that might not actually exist. Yeah. Or you might look at them and be like, oh my gosh, this that is must this per- mean this. Right. And you put these people on a pedestal, potentially, it was a lot of peas, um, that a may potential- not- potential pedestal exactly for people exactly try that one at home guys uh with your pinot egregio so you (laughs) might put them on this pedestal and like almost like positively view them where it might not be that positive or you might like overly have a positive perspective Yeah, but don't you think that's good which i think it's it's better than looking at something negatively it's a hopeful outlook but you're still open with the hopeful hopeful outlook (laughs) to make the decision based on actions that happen thereafter Instead of going into it negatively, right? Yeah, you know, there's a couple of things that come up for me in this conversation. One is that um, sometimes we gravitate towards things that are very familiar, as you were saying earlier, Lauren. Um, these road, we call these like internal roadblocks, and they are familiar places for us. And we, some people like to live in those comfort zones, right? Um, what the challenge is, and why you would go out and hire a coach, for example, or the reason why people go to therapists, or the reason why pe- girls drink a lot of Pinot Grigio mm-hmm. and you know talk about it, is that you know people really want to find positive s- solutions and create change for themselves deep down. Really and truly, they want to create opportunities in relationships and love and life. And what they what they want to do is identify what those challenges and roadblocks are and move them out of the way so they can be a freight train towards their dreams. Right. Yeah. Towards that relationship, towards that person. Um, and, you know, as Jennifer talks about navigating her journey, all Jennifer cannot create um, or even maybe even understand what other people's motivations are. The only person Jennifer can ever, ever, ever control is Jennifer. Mm -hmm. And when she gets really clear about what Jennifer wants, the more she puts that out in the universe, when she gets clear on those values that are important to her, the values she wants in a partner, what she wants her life to look like, and she puts that out there, that's when she's going to get even more of it. It will start coming in little doses. It actually falls on your plate, like you just said. You know, it happens almost immediately sometimes. What would be something, so you talk about people seeking out like a life coach or um, an empowerment coach, um, someone like you in your position. What are some reasons that someone might be in a position, like even how you came into this, you were like, I feel like this calling for this other thing. What are some things that people might start to recognize? Like, oh, maybe a life coach could help us with, and, and then also, Can you explain to our listeners the difference between um, figuring out if this means you need a therapist or we talk often about therapy? Yeah, because why would somebody what's the difference between go to a therapist or a life coach or have both in their lives? Yeah, you know, a lot of my clients have therapists as well, and there this is a big question. So I'm here to clear the air for everyone (laughs) on the air. Um, You know what what we were taught. The, the difference between a therapist and a coach is that a therapist, usually people are motivated by past grievances, challenges, things that you know happen in the past and they wanna work through those and it makes them feel a certain way today. Maybe it, it's a habitual pattern that they wanna break. They just wanna better understand themselves but is very past focused. Whereas when you go out to hire a success coach, you are ready. You've already, um, you know that there's you're on the precipice of something great or you're not willing to tolerate maybe just status quo. You're ready to create big change and it's very future focused. You want to look ahead. You want someone to be your cheerleader and champion in that journey. And people like myself are educated and taught, you know, skills to help get you there. Mm -hmm. Um, 
your first question was like what would be some signs that people would would know like oh maybe this could be something that i would need the help of a life or empowerment coach for like maybe getting and thinking about getting a new job yeah. or yeah so um also in mirroring people and people coming to you synergistically i the reason why i tend to coach a lot of females and i'll explain is because synergistically and energetically i've been a female leader i've led large teams um i've led large portfolios of business and when i tell that story it's like dating when i meet clients there's this energy that happens whether mm -hmm. they hear me on a podcast where they whether we take a free call a complimentary call you know as we explore together we meet at one another at an event it's the same meeting your clients and your coaches are the same so people come to coaches when they really are ready to create that change i like to tell this allegory i, I used it in my workshop last week you know about an olympian going after olympic gold at the world olympics you know what is the first thing that they do they hire go, a coach they hire, hire a coach yeah they hire Duh. a coach they don't go they don't just show up can win gold alone yeah. <laughs> you would never just be like i'm just good at this and even if you are like you know you someone is there to pull that out of you and yes. to help guide yeah. you yes even hold you accountable Bolt hold you accountable is huge hold you accountable um be your cheerleader sometimes just hold the space and time you know be your champion when sometimes things get rough because uh, they be, do and by the way also focus on your strengths what are your strengths what do you bring how can you make those strengths applicable towards your goals um, and also focus on the areas of opportunity those roadblocks we do identify those roadblocks that may get in your way if you are looking down the path towards your future with a partner um, but this old roadblock keeps on coming up for you for example if you have a fear of rejection mm. because you've been rejected in the past it's not negative energy necessarily that you're bringing into this new relationship. It's this roadblock. You literally are looking down this road towards your dream house on the top of the mountain, but you've already th sabotaged it by throwing this roadblock in the way. Right, and then you're going to act in fear because of that. Exactly, which is a lower level of energy, and then yeah. you're not really fully present or showing up to be your best energetic self and your best version of yourself for and with his partner. Could right. somebody come to you and be like, I am ready to be in a relationship. Like I maybe could work on some things, but I really believe I'm ready. And like, I would like you to help me get, and this is different than a matchmaker. Like I would right. like you to help me get to that ultimate goal of like finding somebody that I feel like is like, whatever that word is, my soulmate, my dream guy, Mr. Right, the one, what the fuck ever My it is. guess would be that you probably would work on the person versus the finding. Yeah. Or come up with ways to probably help that person expand their horizons and what can I- But you could do that Right, because we, we've both had a session with Melissa and attended um, her workshop last week. And so just to explain how it sort of works, I feel like, because obviously, you know, you are so bubbly and awesome and like really like like believe in this and it's so inspiring and like it's like of course she can get me somewhere she's so like yes like just having the conversation with you you draw out things from a conversation that like are thoughts that like were buried way deep down in your belly and she asks you those questions and gets them out so it's like well and a question i can envision you asking somebody that wants to find love like well what are you doing to like get out there and then like well what's keeping you from going out or like a, just a whole train of thought that gets somebody to say like, oh, I guess I should go on some Do dates. the thing. Or, right, sign up. Go get some new photos and put it on an app. There's a million things. Right. But There's steps. You, you would you help people to do steps. Draw that out. Yeah, I mean, to Jennifer's right, um, you know, what I focus on is the energy. So I want to focus on the why. Why is finding a partner so important to you? See, that's the first question you should be asking yourself well why anything right it could why? apply yeah. to anything why out there. is it important to you why is a promotion important to you why what what values does a relationship bring to you what is love what's the definition of love for jennifer which is by the way very different than yeah. everyone else <laughs> totally everyone is absolutely different so my answer is hallmark Just oh a good boy. hallmark movie <laughs> i love hallmark i know yeah. <laughs> it's almost hallmark christmas season october 26th it's almost coming soon here no but that's important to know because the more specific you can be the clearer your goal will be and to take the step the day by day steps instead of like i think in our coaching session you said like the thirty thousand foot goal or something like that yeah thirty thousand foot view because it, it, it seems so overwhelming that way like you're single and you've gone on a bunch of bad dates and this other guy like f you over and you're like i want to get married 
married. That I want to get married goal is like, yeah, right. That is not going to happen. But Melissa helps you figure out how to like figure out that 30,000 foot goal or view and take the little steps that you need to get there. And when we had a coaching session, I really feel like, and it's sort of just what you said, Jen, like there are answers within you. Melissa, first of all, Melissa, and back me up, does not give you the answers. No. She just even when she's you your right, family, even you though try she probably knows them, she's she asks you the right questions that then <gasps> open your mind and heart or your power of perspective to figure out where those live within you. And you were asking me some questions that I hesitated on answering only because I felt like my answers were so obviously simple that I was like, that's not it. But she, <laughs> you do say in the beginning of your sessions, there's like no judgment. That whole spiel I love. What do you tell your clients to make them feel comfortable? Yeah, I mean, in coaching, there's absolutely no judgment. It's a safe place. Um, in coaching, we really believe at the highest energetic levels that there's no right or wrong, that there's no mistakes and everything's an opportunity. So it, it again, being a coach, it, we're building a relationship. We have a rapport here. There's tr we've, This relationship is built on trust. You're going to share your deepest, darkest fears and your biggest dreams with me. And I'm not going to help you get there because guess what? I have no idea what yeah. my clients' motivations are, their values, their personal experiences, their dreams. And their motivations. I, I can't know that until we do some exploration. So listen, if someone had a perfect formula for that, someone would have published a book already and I wouldn't even be having this conversation sure. with you. We'd all just, you know, be stenciling well, you can write paint that by book. number and yeah. we get there. But yeah. it doesn't work that way. Every individual is different. So we have to work on the energy. We have to focus on the energy, expanding that perspective, realizing to your point that there's an abundance of answers that you already have in you. You just have some maybe roadblocks that got sure. in the way. Yeah. So we move those out of the way and, and then how, we go for it. How do you identify without being holier than thou and you're trying to figure it out yourself, like those roadblocks or those things within the person that you're in the relationship with? Like, what do you, because I mean, we're not you, we're not a life coach, we're not educated on this. And then, but if you're studying yourself and like maybe having sessions with you, you're more aware of these things like how would you be able to identify yeah, I that guess, to simplify it it's almost like how do you know if you have positive perspective or not or like sometimes and you're just having person. a good day or what about the other person like how do you how do you analyze like i know you gave us seven levels of energy so i mean we still are trying to figure those <laughs> out and honestly i just feel like i bounce around but um and you're like nobody's at seven I'm like, perfect. So at least we know we don't really have to shoot yeah. that high. We only have to get to six. Um, so how could you at least assess yourself or, and also if you are in a partnership, assess the other person without being biased yes, based on their behaviors? Judges. Yeah. So <laughs> Well, that uh, would take you down to another level of energy exactly. if mm -hmm. you're judging. Right. Mm -hmm. So precisely, again, back to the fundamentals. One, if you're judging something as good or bad, you're already at a low level, right? Shit. Because everything's focused on your own ego. What about an observation? But hold on, Melissa. Is that a judgment? But Melissa, if somebody, oh, you're right, okay? I know you're right. But when if, you sigh mid thought, you already know you're wrong. No, because if somebody is doing a thing that is not cool, good, like, no, you can't assign good, okay. assign good or bad to it. Like, right? you know what? I had a discussion <laughs> with my boyfriend, and I was being very like, yes, I I was being. Uh, yes, and, and uh, I understand that you could have seen it that way. I uh, take responsibility for that, and I apologize for making you feel like I'm, my tone is like of coming from blame, but like, can you be willing to see the, and there was no <laughs> ability. Well, here's the and thing. And I was trying not to judge, but I'm like, you're not being open-minded, but. But is that judgment if he's or not being open-minded? Maybe it's a recognition of just not operating on a level of energy at that moment. Here's the thing. The only person's energy you can control is your own. That's true. You can only be the person to energetically come at something more positively, with more opportunity. You cannot c control other people. You just can't. That's but true. But you can control... Okay, we have the, also the saying that says, um, you know... Pain is inevitable, but suffering is a choice. Ooh, yeah. So you get to choose. And that's in that situation, you can decide, all right, this is happening. We're in an argument. But how do I choose to respond to this? Mm -hmm. Am I going to see this as an opportunity for us to grow? 
Am I going to see this as an opportunity for us to create some more synergy among one another? Or am I, am I, is it okay? By the way, it's okay to get to the lower levels energy. They act like slingshots, by the right. way. So that sometimes you need to go to the lower levels. So you can get to a higher level to go get what you want and or become a little more, give you more perspective. So if you get down to that lower level of like, I want to be in conflict. I'm going to duke this out. I'm going to fight it out. I'm going to pacify him, but I'm going to duke it out. Like that really and truly is the only thing you can control. It's how you approach that situation. Okay. You cannot control other people. And so that's how we would work on it. That but now, makes so much sense. It totally does. And it but helps can you me. be with somebody in a successful relationship if your energies are not on the same level? Absolutely. Absolutely. People are all over the scale yeah. every single point all of the day. The like you could wake yeah. up in the morning and be like, yes, I'm going to seize the day. And then something <laughs> terrible happens on your way to work or, you know, someone's just nasty to you in the grocery and store. And you lose the grasp And you lose that, it. Yeah. And slingshots affects you to somewhere else. I mean, that's part of life. We're all humans. Like no one resonates at a very, very high level except for like maybe the Dalai Lama or like that's Oprah seven, right? or something. Yeah. Like high up there. Right. Oprah. I Oprah. love that you put Oprah up there. <laughs> Oprah. Yeah. yeah okay. She's like, high. I mean, think about it. Justin Timberlake or somebody like I that. I don't know that he's so good. I'm just he listen i'm no judgment making a joke yeah you I'm just saying, i don't know with I don't your know. judgy eyes i'm just considering that that might not be the case i no, just but don't we know. get that it's you <laughs> please be gentle with yourself to know that you operate on many different levels of energy yeah. and you have goals to get to a certain point and keep be mindful of those things but you're yeah. all over the board because totally. life is life Life is life. Now, an interesting happen thing happened when you saged me and this whole thing like transpired in your home and I was sitting there like, what is going on on my cell phone right now? And I'm like, Melissa, what do I say to this nonsense? And you're like, well, what do you want to say? And I'm like, God damn it, Melissa. <laughs> Give me the answers. You know the answer. Tell me what to say. But and, she draws well, it out of you, which is the no, right way. No, she also like would say, she like said something really like beautiful and articulate and I was like, can you write it for me at least? Yeah. Like, I don't I don't remember what you said. And, and I was the like, phone and was text. like cooking and doing all kinds of things and I was starving and cranky and like I was just like let me just follow you around okay did you say this like let me did you phrase it like this but anyway so you wouldn't tell me the exact answer but then after all was said and done and like this person did not write me back and like just it played out how it played out you had like very specific thoughts about the thing you're like well obviously it's because his ego is in the way I'm like oh you had the answers <laughs> That Why didn't you tell hat. me? I switched the hats. Oh, I went from you've... coaching hat to friend sister hat, oh. which is like two very different hats. Like after you have three glasses of wine, it turns into a whole different right. scenario. You're... So yeah, that was well, we hat. were we were off the clock at that point. <laughs> no, but I think that time. all of also this... I beaten you in Rummy Cube. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> if you're a friend or a life coach or whatever, basically, and we talk about this on this show all the time that it takes a village this is why this show started oh, because God, we were like well we're experts on dating and relationships because uh we've logged like 7428.2 <laughs> hours of talking about dating and relationships <laughs> and dating and like we're so we, because we all do that like will you will you text him what i what sure. you just yeah. said help me so you also have to think of Melissa and being a life coach. You know, you hear that like life coach, empowerment coach, career coach, leadership coach, whatever you want to call it. And you think like maybe it's hokey or that's not going to work or whatever. But think about it like this, like she's educated and she comes from a very like, I would say a positive. She resonates on a positive level of energy, which is why this even fell into her lap. And this is another level friend level like you have a friend hat you have a expert hat oh you looked at me and i was like what am i and <laughs> or what, i'm just saying that like think of this as another level of it takes a village like an expert level yeah. of it takes a village um, i love that right I mean, that's really what it's about i've we all wear many hats in life also, right? Like I came from a corporate background. I was an executive, um, you know, and strategy. I love strategy. I was like, oh, I'm going to be a strategist the rest of my life. Like this is what I'm so good at. But guess what? Now I get to take my intuition, marry that with my leadership skills um, and help other people. Like there's nothing brings me more joy. And by the way, there's strategy in that as well. Sure. There's a strategic planning and I get to, you know, really lean in and help. And like I said, I help a lot of women, a lot of it, women in business, especially women leaders, whether they're entrepreneurs and they've started their own small businesses or women that are trying to scale and grow themselves, find their confidence in their journey. What's that next level? How do I become a really stronger leader on behalf of my team and within my organization? Um, so I really believe in like, you know, women finding their voice and women being able, it takes a village, right? Mm -hmm. But being able to really find their place and know that 
they can accomplish anything that they want in this universe. You can be anything you want today and anything you want tomorrow. It was truly Which is that. so exciting. And so also, exciting. so, okay, I, I don't remember if I've ever said this on the show or not or if, where I even heard this, but someone once said to me, a wise person, maybe it was even me, I don't know, but they were <laughs> like, who's on my board of directors? And like, the, your board of directors are the people you value their opinion. So like, for instance, I have you, I have my therapist, I have Melissa, thankfully, in my family mm. um, and all of her knowledge comes with that um, and a couple other people that are on my board of directors the people I consult on a regular basis for real life cho like choices like mm -hmm. the major things that matter even the things that don't matter like shopping and stuff but it doesn't matter they're the people I value their opinion I think in the terms of relationships and dating and things like that the more um, help you get is the more attractive you are to me. Like, if you're somebody who goes to therapy and you tell me outwardly on a date or whatever, like, not that you're like a hot mess and probably need like some sort of like well, that would be judging. jacket, yeah. <laughs> but like, no, like that you weren't just released or should go back. No, somewhere. sure, but that like, you're that you're open not to crazy town. You're open to knowledge, right? And is that you know what that is. You are a vulnerable human that knows you can't do it alone and you are willing to share that with others and connect on that level. You're that open that it's just like another human that you rely on. Like it's an education, honestly, of, in some area you don't have the education on. Like you go to school, you didn't know science and biology before you took the class. You don't yeah. have all the answers in, you know, psychology or in coaching of career stuff, like how to make the choices. Like, I mean, I texted Melissa like, the other day. I was like, I was offered a job, but I don't know if I should tell the universe I'm going to take this job or I'm going to fight that and say, no, I'm going to go after my passions. You know, so it's like you don't have all those answers. Yeah. And you might make the wrong choice several Showing times. Showing a willingness to be open minded or to like reflect via yourself or other people's opinions that you trust or your board of directors, if you will, is like a good quality. Right, Melissa? You know, open. I really think, again, it's all about we, we be when we're born, like when we're young kids, by the way, imagine go back to like your child, your child version of yourself, that childlike energy and joy that you had. And what were your dreams? What were your goals? Like, unfortunately, what happens is they we, were like very lofty, too, <laughs> I'm sure. But what happens is we grow up. Yeah. Right. And then we learn things from our peers. We learn things about the news. We get hurt a couple of times. There, we get influenced by our parents. Um, the, a multitude we have bills of factors. To pay. Yeah, we have bills to pay. There, all these things happen. And so what we do is become really, really, really good at closing ourselves off and becoming um, from getting hurt. Mm at the end of the day, right? Fear-based so back, decisions. Fear-based decisions. And we're protecting ourselves constantly, but we're actually not bringing ourselves that childlike joy that we once had. With that openness, same thing with relationships. Imagine how much more you will get if you bring make yourself open to that. If you really realize how much abundance of love you receive every day, how much abundant self-love you can create for yourself and how much you could give the universe, what might you get in return? Because a lot of people are afraid to give love because they think they're going to get rejected. But it's like if you give it, you're going to get it in return. And you have to just take the risk and kind of swallow the fear and have the faith. We talked about a lot like just thinking about historically, like I may worry about this thing over and over again, but historically, like, has it actually been a problem? It always works out. Am always I homeless on the street? Knock on wood. No, I'm not. I'm here. You're never going to be. I'm fine. No. But, but right? Like, and you help in the conversation, you helped like draw that out of me, but it's like always been there. That's I, the thing. Yeah. You're like, drawing out back... the child, like, yes. like joy yes. and lack of fear. And also and... logic. Cause it's like, well, has that happened? No. So why are you afraid of it? Like, why, and also is, the that, best... is that true really? Always ask yourself. That's a roadblock. Is that true really? Is that yeah. the ultimate universal truth? Or did I like kind of make that up? <laughs> is that just my fear speaking? Is he yeah. actually like wanting to have story? sex with that other chick? Like, I mean, he probably, probably does. Or maybe, but, uh, well, and <laughs> he might not happen. actually do what it though. That's do, the thing. What would you say to somebody who was re dealing with like residual negative energy or somebody or people operating on a lower level of energy from past? And I know you deal with not the past. You're not a therapist. Like, but what would you say to somebody who is trying to like, just like a quick shot of advice about trying to like deal with negative energy from a past relationship or residual energy from a past relationship and like letting that go to be present and enjoy the moment because there's so many things, good things happening in the moment. Yeah. You know, my thought 
is one, you know, we try to, as coaches, to your point, we do focus on the past just in order to identify what those roadblocks could, could be so that we can change that narrative. So we identify it, we name it, we rename it into something so much more powerful and so much more positive so then you can go after that. And what comes up for me is like, it's not maybe necessarily residual energy that you're bringing to your next relationship. It is that fear. Yeah. It is that, um, we call them like, maybe it's a limited belief just because I've been rejected in the past, it's gonna happen again. I know this, like this person could have no intention of rejecting you or you know the same good thing could happen if you um i don't know if you have an idea or thought that you need to get married by the time you're 30 right what mm. a misnomer could that be sure. how true is that really that you need to get married by your, the time you're 30 i got married in my late 30s so um and there's plenty of women out there finding and defining their own values and love and energy around love so like we're pioneering right now i think that's also something we need to understand is like we're in a new time a new space we're pioneering it's all about what you're putting out there and we're trying new things on for size we're letting our egos go we move these roadblocks these residual you know roadblocks that Get, keep on getting on our way and if you're able to focus on the future with so much more power with so much more confidence with so much more openness what might you accomplish yeah so many things what is what does that mean because a lot of people throw this word around and i would like you and your expert opinion to clarify what does it mean to like let go of the ego what does that because it's so many people use that also and they miss letting go it. i'm sorry they that misuse it too that is just a con it's like the Ugh. two shortest words ever if i could just let go what that <laughs> that's if hard I, if i could tattoo that on myself and practice it every day that's like my <laughs> mantra if in every sense of the word i need to learn how to let it go but if someone's trying to like focus on the present and what well, i don't know i mean it's it's so complicated and layered <laughs> and like i know that your answer is gonna be like you know what purpose does that serve you yeah exactly what well, purpose yeah. does ruminating on the past yeah, rumin serve you towards your future okay there might be actually a positive solution to that right maybe there was a lesson that was learned sure maybe there's you're gonna avoid that again in the going forward the next time but what lesson did you learn from that but pain is inevitable struggle is completely optional mm. at least you ruminated sometimes people don't even do that yeah i think <laughs> self-reflecting and rumination there's a boundary there's a fine right, line the there. moral of yeah. my story i think no. everyone should really think about their actions no for sure <laughs> i totally agree but letting go is important for you to move forward and get rid of so letting go i think is the ultimate like result of getting rid of a roadblock Letting go. Uh, yeah, I mean, that might be true when you fully are able to realize that whatever happened in the past served a purpose, it had a value. There are no mistakes. There are literally no mistakes in life. Like, what would life be like if you thought everything you've done up to this point, there was no mistakes? It mm. was all getting you where you're supposed to go. I have a problem where I try to connect the dots. <laughs> and I like obsess over that. I'm like, well, the universe must have brought me this issue because I had to learn the following three examples of how to but not I do think this in the as you're recognizing that just know that that's fine to recognize it but that you might not have the answer as to why it's happening right in the moment of recognition I'm not it's right yes like I up true. in my brain all the time like sometimes we let we have to let go to sh throw that term around again of not knowing the answer then or potentially just saying I may never know the answer to that and how that's much part is it about process. having faith in whatever you believe in yourself mean probably mainly yeah it's, i mean really everything's about having faith in yourself knowing that you've always been able to solve the solve the answers before knowing you have all the power inside of you knowing that you have all these strengths that make you you your, your unique version of yourself that's what makes you you there's only one you you're the most awesome you by the way why would you want anyone that doesn't see how awesome you are so when it comes back to that ego question, yeah. you know, I want to circle back to that. I think really and truly at the end of the day, what would your life be like if you got to peel back all the layers of the onion, if you will, of like fear and doubt and the things that people told you and the things you know to be true, right? Absolutely true. It's absolutely true that like I'm going to be rejected because it happened before. What if you peeled back all those layers of the onion and you were just raw but you were just not focused on your ego you weren't focused on the past and you were so focused on the present finding joy and self-love in yourself finding joy and love in the people you interact with every day your family your friends your girlfriends um imagine like even the, the guy at the grocery store 
how is he helping serve yeah. you and give you love and support right now? Be right? aware of all of it. We're so scarcity focused. Yeah. You know, when you're thinking in scarcity yeah, of like, lack, yes, what lack. I don't have. you're when going you to breed only, more lack. When you only call your girlfriends when he's being annoying or da 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 da. It's like, Which, well, by the way, about, PSA, about, yeah. it's annoying. Don't do that, guys. If <laughs> right. you only do that, then we want you to break up with them. And, and when they break not, up with you, we're actually happy about it secretly, but we'll be like, oh. And so it's awesome. not like, oh, but not to brag, but but also think about the times where like something good happens and like celebrate those times. Like tell a friend or write it down or make a, a note of it because yeah. we only really talk about like when something bad, like, oh, I need to call Melissa because so, blah, 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 blah. Like also if Melissa's your life coach or your friend or whatever she is, part of your village, if you will, like what about the good things too? Like focus on the, like, oh my God, this, thing happened today how like, happy does it make you when people call you with like success stories from the things you coach them on yeah i mean that's I, I you guys i can't even say it enough in my journey i thought there was a lot of points in my life that i was like wow this is it this is like <laughs> yeah this was the big this is the big moment this is right the aha moment. this is the aha moment but it really wasn't until i got into coaching that i have experienced this like honestly elation this joy of like watching women grow watching them have their aha moments, watching them accomplish these things and peel back their layers of the onion and become so much more confident and so much more positive. And by the way, that first call, sometimes there's a lot of apprehension. There's a mm. lot of fear. There's a lot of questions of like, what's to happen? And then guess what? By, by the next time we have a few sessions, we do a workshop, we meet one another, we, we've, moved, we've moved that up down the road, they are completely different people. And when we reflect back on that, you could see how much joy and how much abundance they're creating for themselves. Energy breeds like energy. The more positive that they're creating for themselves, those wins they keep on getting along the road will continue to breed more of that. And that's really just, that's the pinnacle. Yeah, <gasps> cool. I love. Totally. Um, now I'm like, we should probably become we should, coaches. Yeah. Except we're coaching you guys in love. No, and we're we going to actually are. answer a listener question. Yeah, really quickly. Really quickly. One Michelle in, in like last. One minute. Yeah. You, Super fast. You, she's 26. She's dating somebody 38. They've been dating for three months, and they haven't really talked about a future and where this is all going. She really likes him, but she's not sure how he feels back. Obviously, he enjoys spending time with her because he keeps doing it, but she's not really sure if there's much else. And she wants to talk to him, but she's, like, not really sure how to approach it and if she should just kind of, like, continue to let things progress naturally and see if he's actually a good match for her before she d dives into something more serious. How does she approach this conversation? Yeah. Does she? Doesn't she? How does she do it? My first question to Michelle would be, why is this relationship important to you? What values do you have around relationships? What do you want in a partner? And what is the worst that can happen is if you ask this gentleman These how things he feels are about so, you? These things are so right. good because if she can answer those questions, then she will have no problem going into this conversation because she knows what she wants to get out of it right. and where she comes from. And also the risk and i remember you said this to me too about you're like well you know like you you don't know what you're going to hear back if you send a certain message setting your boundaries um so are you willing to get potentially like a response that isn't favorable and personally and i'm going to say this to michelle and i think we'd all probably agree that having information that keeps you from wasting further time is way better than, than just acting right. in fear because yeah. otherwise you are actually living you potentially this guy could like you a lot he could also like you just enough and he also might like three other people we don't know but yeah. if what you want is a relationship then you should get what you want yeah Where, who cares what his answer yeah. is and, like, and you're letting those fear-based things come into play but at the end of the day that's really what matters so just get down to the like simplicity of it and figure those things right. out but don't don't just ask like straight out like there's no, some you have tact. tooth and tact yeah, but like but... ask yourself straight out and then go into it with that and and for more of this amazing information and any other think questions you may or may not have, Melissa, where can everyone find you? You can find me at BoxyOutside.com. Um, you can email me at Melissa at BoxyOutside.com or you can find me on Instagram at BoxyOutside. Yay! And can people work with you if they're not in LA? How can people yes, like Yes, I, I can work that? with people all over the country. We actually coach a lot over the phone. I also do uh, corporate coaching, executive coaching, so that can be in person. But uh, yeah, we can work in so many various ways. If you want to, you know, 
send me an email and do a complimentary car call just to explore yeah. and build our relationship, let me know. It's worth it, you guys. Just let it go. Just like the song from Frozen. Just, and <laughs> don't forget <laughs> to tune into the show so for Friendtober. That is coming up next week. It's a month where we celebrate our friends with our first friend and fellow host, William Valdez. Yeah. And don't forget to follow us on all the socials at Complicated Show. Jen, where can everyone find you? Also to add to that, don't forget to rate five stars, comment, leave comments for us, get in touch with us. We could potentially answer your questions on air and tell a friend. You can guys, you guys can all find me at Jennifer Golden on all the social media platforms. And you can find me at Lauren Lee Nelly on all the social meds as well. And don't forget to follow Melissa at Box the Outside. And we will be back next week. We're here every Wednesday at 6 p.m. PST. Let it go. Let, Let it, it go. go. And we'll see you next week. Let it go. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. 